Hello and welcome to another episode of season two of Cup Shop with Guy Three, Old World Conversations with New Age Technology. I'm Guy Three Shivastha, and this is Cup Shop with Guy Three. Before we start, I'd like to wish wish each and every one of you a very happy Independence Day. May our country grow and prosper, and may the bonds of brotherhood and harmony strengthen with each passing day. As many of you know, Gupshap is a series of light and casual conversations on topical issues with women of substance. But light does not mean it's frivolous. Casual does not make it flippant. Gupshap is not gossip. Gupshap is in fact an intimate chat in the company of family and friends in the age of social distancing and lockdowns. Gupshap is not designed as a high toxic, high voltage toxic debate aimed at getting you angry and agitated. Rather, it's an attempt, it's an endeavor to ignite meaningful conversations so that one has the time and leisure to ponder, reflect, <coughs> learn, unlearn, and comment on issues around us. Does that mean that no uncomfortable questions will be asked? They will, but not in the India wants to know, Bharat Pushta hai kind of way. Gupshap is extremely broad in its scope. Previous topics have ranged from economics and financial planning to films, food, feng shui, beauty, cancer care. Previous guests have included not just authors and journalists and activists, but also a professional classical singer, a managing director, a CEO. But what makes Gupshap truly unique is the interactive nature of the conversation and the quality of the audience. The predominantly female audience of Gupshap is well-educated, intelligent, and discerning. These women are the opinion makers and the thought leaders of today's India. So thank you, dear audience members, for signing in. Now sit back and enjoy Gupshap with Gayatri, Old World Conversations with New Age Technology. Let me now introduce our guest for the evening. Our guest today is someone who's quietly worked her way into being one of, into becoming one of Bollywood's most powerful young women. Admin, I'd like you to spotlight our guest for today. Thank you. Thank you, Gayatri. Yeah. Someone, as I was mentioning, our guest today is someone who's quietly worked away to becoming one of Bollywood's most powerful young women. She's an award-winning independent film director. Her first film producer, sorry, her <laughs> first independent project Jan Jigar won the award for the best short film at the Mumbai Film Festival in 2018. She now has 17 films under her belt, including blockbusters like Queen, Super 30, Purta Punjab, Mardani 2. She has even produced a film on India's first female animated superhero, Priya. While she carries a famous surname, she doesn't belong to a filmy, filmy family. Tanvi Gandhi, welcome to Gapshap with Gayatri. Such thank a pleasure you. to have you here. Thank you so much, Gayatri. Thank you. And thank you for taking time out on Sunday on Independence Day for this. Thank you. And thanks for the consideration. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining. And I know you've been working really long hours and you've been extremely busy. So, and I know also what this always. <laughs> For gup shop, I think we all have time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So Tanvi, I was most fascinated about your first and India's first animated female superhero, Priya. So Priya has joined a universe of female superheroes, a global universe called Supreme Sheroes. Can you tell us more about Priya so and whom she's in this galaxy with? 
So actually, the thing is, Priya is yet to, to be honest with you, that's our aim. Uh, our aim is to take her um, where she really truly belongs, part of the galaxy of all these wonderful uh, super women. Um, she is, um, the journey really began um, with her being actually a comic, um, you know, comic star comic. really. Yes, comic hero where, um, the creator actually thought of her as in 2014, uh, was it? 14. 14, yeah, when, uh, you know, part of the Nirbhaya case. So she's inspired by that incident mm -hmm. where she is a survivor of brutal rape and uh, sexual abuse. And uh, then he came up with three, a total of three different comics um, on sex trafficking, on sexual abuse and acid attack. And I felt that what she stands for uh, when she speaks about courage and, you know, and um, this whole thing about our superheroes are not about superpowers, but they can be internal. Superpower is all about having the courage to speak up, to communicate, to have a dialogue. And that is, is her superpower actually. Um, and so last year we came up with Priya's Mask, uh, which is really a two minute public service animation where she spoke about COVID and, um, you know, keeping the mask on and uh, the love for uh, healthcare workers. Um, yeah, and I think all that, and talking to young kids, I think that was very, very important to reach out to. Um, I mean, the world was going through something absolutely unprecedented and, um, you know, confused in so many ways that uh, there was no communication to towards kids or any kind of awareness, to be honest. So I think, uh, we're very, very excited because somewhere along the way, uh, this comic book got um, got elevated to, even though it was a two minute animation, but it, you know, it went to stage two uh, from stage one of being on paper, it became uh, animation. And now um, we're working towards other causes, other, other different kinds of uh, topics that are important to be spoken to, uh, towards young kids, uh, young adults. Um, so there is climate change, there is uh, pornography, there is other stuff that uh, she will be speaking about um, and speaking to young, young people, either through comic or through two minute animation or eventually, which is our larger goal to take her uh, absolutely global and to take her on a long form um, animation, you know, or live action, wherever she goes really. Wow. Yeah. And this project was funded by the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi. Yes. Priya's mask. Yes, it was. You know, they do have these grants where they reach out. And um, so we, we, Ram, are, who's also the creator, who's also, uh, we're a part of uh, a team together, really, you know, applied for the grant. And I think uh, just to be able to get an opportunity to speak about such things i think itself is great and i felt that sitting in our homes last year uh, not knowing when we will come on set when will we actually be physically around each other we were able to create something so wonderful and uh, we had such a great support from our actors you know um, me and my team my fellow producers my fellow teammates we all reached out to uh, actors and they just jumped onto the bandwagon dietary. I think it was just the most incredible thing. Um, you know, with the Vidya Balan, I yeah. called up um, Renal Thakur. Renal Thakur, who was Priya. I called up Kabir Khan and I said, Listen, I, I if you don't mind, I would like your daughter uh, to voice the little girl Nina because uh, I don't know, I think she would be great. And he's like, yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't have a problem. We'll ask her if she yeah. wants to do it. And, I sent the PPT across and that little girl was like, I want to do this. So all of us sitting in our different homes, uh, voicing through yeah. Zoom. Uh, and I thought, this is incredible. Like nothing can stop us from making things. Technology is, uh, as much as we are homebound, uh, if there's a drive and an intent, uh, we can do anything really. And we ended up doing that and it got picked up by global media and it became a really big thing actually last year. Yeah, absolutely. The Washington Post said, she is the brown girl superhero the world needs. Exactly. And I, I say indeed. And you know what? That's the thing. We feel that the world is so ready for brown, for, um, you know, people of different skin tones. Uh, in fact, just yesterday I was reading a CNN article which said that in, it's gone up to 40% of colored 
uh, Americans uh, versus last 10 years, um, which is huge, which is absolutely huge. The fact that 40% of, of America now is, which goes to show that we have to push stories and narratives that have brown people or people of different colors as central characters uh, and not um, just any kind of peripheral character, but central character, central stories. And that's the main endeavor through Priya, through all the other stuff that I'm planning to do as well. And I am doing, you know, because I think we're all ready to go global. We already are in a world that's super connected now. Uh, and we could be working out of anywhere. Um, yeah. And I think it's important to push, push our, our, our skin tone ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you must. Yes. You must. And all the best to Priya. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the other project that also you've been working on, which recently released when you're talking of a cross-country collaboration, cross-continent collaboration. Yes. You recently produced three short films. Yes. So which were filmed in the lockdown of 2020-21. Absolutely. And are now available on Woot, the OTT platform Woot. How was it? What are the challenges of filming in the lockdown? You know, um, I think last year as we all have experienced we had we had no idea what to process what what was going on between handling household chores and the limited time that we had to make ourselves feel a little productive I think uh, there was only that much time right between handling a home um, and I just uh, you know felt that this is a very unique time and it also needs to be documented at some point like the fact that we're sitting at home, the fact that the world, act, it's never happened before that the world has gone through the same exact emotion, uh, real time across, you know, even the world wars were restricted to certain sections of the world. Um, but this was a global impact completely and a global attack in that sense. So I think two things happened. One was that there was a deep urge to try and see how one can document this phase. And the second part was, I think because we were home, uh, there were always somewhere along the way, there were, the mind was always constantly working to figure out what to do, what to do. You know, we can't just sit at home and not do anything. Uh, and I was very fortunate to have clicked with uh, an old friend and associate of mine, uh, a colleague and a friend, uh, Indrani Ray, who we, you know, one fine day started chatting and she sent me some stuff and I, we would, you know, these things, you know, it's always about communication. This is another thing I've realized. If the intent is there and the communication is, and people are on the same page, um, you can do anything. And literally one thing led to the other. And the first film was called A Short Hello, uh, which we shot in Delhi remotely. Uh, Dipanita Sharma uh, has acted in that and um, spoke to her very openly. She opened her home. And quite honestly, Gayatri, we had three people shoot that film literally one dop director of photography one associate and dipanita on field in her home uh very grateful for her family to have allowed uh, right in the middle of peak down people mm -hmm. come in and shoot and Indrani and myself were in uh, bombay on zoom like this mm -hmm. through the day one day shoot um but it's a beautiful story and i think what came out of it was very cinematic and gorgeous and we felt that we did not compromise on stories uh, the second one was uh, with Natasha Rastogi and Adil Hussain. Uh, again, a beautiful story of a slightly older couple. Um, spoke to Natasha, who has a beautiful, gorgeous house in um, in Delhi. And I think that was our main modus operandi. Let's go to actors who have great homes because there's no chance I'm getting a location now. Uh, you know, so if they're open to us coming in. And that's exactly what happened. She says, you know what, I like this trip. Let's do this. And uh, spoke to Adil, who... You know, by the way, Gayatri, these have been amazing ways in which all these people have come on board. We literally cold call, cold email, expressing who I am, my background, uh, my partner Indrani's background, this is what we do, this is what we want to make, on board. Like, no questions asked, on board. Wow. And uh, he was there shooting two days with us in Delhi as well. Um, and then That's the two days of shoot and the movie was well. It was done and uh, yeah, yeah. And you know, and the third one was also very interesting. That fortunately for us was on shoot. We decided we can't do any more virtual. We want to be on set. Uh, and that was earlier into 2021, peak lockdown again uh, with Shekhar, um, 
who with Vishal Shekhar with fame. Vishal Shekhar. Yes. And uh, he had actually done Nirja and he felt so perfect for the role. Reached out to him. Uh, he said, I've never acted before. We said, but we think you can. Uh, he said, okay, let's do this. And uh, Shibani Dandekar as well. Two, two people who one uh, people don't think would be able to perform. But I think we were very, very convinced uh, in our choice of having those two perform the part. Um, and they were fabulous. And all credit goes to you know, my wonderful uh, friend Indrani, who was able to get great performances out. Um, and I think as a team, we were able to achieve, um, it was a personal, um, you know, achievement to be able to create content when the world was shut down and document stuff, um, the, the, the period that we are living in, to be honest with you. And they've been picked up and are showcasing, which is also great, so happy. Yeah, just happy. Absolutely. So the third film with uh, Shibani and Shekhar is called Dinner in Lockdown. Yes, yes. Right. It's and called Dinner in Lockdown. The, the second one is called Tea and a Rose. Uh, they're all available on Boot Select. Uh, and so you must, I mean, I hope people are able to watch it and tell me what they thought. It'd be great to hear good, bad or ugly. Uh, but we're very, very proud to be able to have created something when uh, it seemed like nothing was possible to be done. But I felt after this experience, to be honest, Dietri, I feel anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Yeah, yeah. You know, and also I'll tell you what was also for me was very gratifying that uh, these short films, you know, normally um, are not commercial properties. They're just made for the fun, uh, to showcase talent, for support of each other. Um, you know, short films are not really out there to for, for anybody to make pots and pots of money because that's not that's not the model for short films, but the fact that they got picked up while they were being edited and uh, while we were, you know, still putting together things while they were shot earlier, we were packaging them. Uh, what was itself such a blessing, you know, because my fourth film that came out on uh, Boot Select as well called Jan Jigar um, actually was ready way back uh, in 2007, 18 actually. Uh, but didn't find the right platform. And now right time, right opportunity, even that got uh, an opportunity to be showcased. And I think yeah. till a film doesn't go through release, Gayatri, they hold no value. You know, there's no point. I mean, you make them, but they need to be shown eventually. So yeah, I think I'm just happy that they did get shown. Till it gets to the audience, you don't yes. feel like the baby's been finally delivered in a way. Yeah, yeah. The release is everything you need to have your films shown whatever happens of the fate to be honest with you uh, it's not about what happened it needs it still needs to go out there visibility so i watched two of your films and uh, the caption is love in the time of corona and it's just is this a theme that resonates with you i thought they were aesthetically very extremely beautifully shot you know the, the as you're saying the homes were gorgeous and they were yes. delightful to look Yes, yes, you yes. Look at and the black and how it starts in black and white and you know that color. Absolutely, realization dawns in a way. I'm Absol without giving away the plot. Absolutely, and I think that was a very, very definite thing that uh, Indrani wanted. Um, that eventually, when the women uh, feel empowered, uh, there's color in their lives, uh, and I think that was a bold move uh, because to compete with black and white and other highly dynamic colors around i think um glad we stuck to it uh because they've got a, a classic vibe to them the films uh also the, the storytelling has a certain uh you know i i, I the reviews have been great uh vis-a-vis -vis the films um i i think they've been picked they've been noticed for that reason the fact that they've been different from everything else that's out there yeah. you know? and i also noticed uh, the reference to Gabriel Garcia, Marco Asia, 100 Years of Solitude, Love at the Time of Cholera. Yeah, yeah. Was that a tribute to your English honours days at LSR? Um, you know, I supported it full on, but I should not be taking, and I cannot take credit for it, to be honest, because that is entirely Indrani. Uh, as a producer, I, um, for me, you know, what I'm supposed to, I, that's what I believe personally, that I need to, have a hundred percent faith and trust in what I want to make and in the director, in the writer and director. So once I read it, I was convinced of uh, how the story will be told. 
I let her be. I have to provide as a producer the most conducive environment for my uh, director to come out with the best version of what he or she is going out there to say. Uh, so there was no major interference. I, wherever I was required to, you know, I would, wherever I felt I should say something I did. But um, I wanted to make sure that I'm able to provide her every single thing that is needed for her to say the best story, you know? Um, and that's my job as a, as a producer, to be honest with you. Which brings me to my next question, Tanvi. Uh, you call, you are an independent film producer. You're very, uh, you're not the typical image one has of a producer. Neither oh, are you a big... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, initially, I think in the 80s and 90s, the image of a producer was Mr. Moneybag and usually a guy. Yes, so, of course. Lots, lots, lots that of has stuff. been a journey. <laughs> lots and lots of that. spare cash and someone, you know, investing lots of money. And you are also a producer and you are absolutely very different from the normal image one has, the stereotypical image one has. And neither are you a big corporation, otherwise you have the big Dharma production and the Yash Raj film. So how did you, how did you get into production and how did you finally, what's the journey been about becoming an independent film producer? Should we start with your NDTV days? Um, yeah, I think we could rewind. Um, I, because I think it's interesting to, I mean, the journey is yet to start as an independent producer, to be honest with you, but I'm glad that the short films have come out, which, um, which sort of is a small stamp on the fact that, yes, I can produce absolutely independently without the support of external funds or any other organization, which I feel is, is uh, just, I, I mean, it's empowering for me, for myself to be able to feel, okay, I could do next something else next, you know. Uh, but the journey actually did begin from NDTV when I was uh, right after LSR. I joined in uh, 2000. And um, yeah, they were the most fascinating years, to be honest, Gayatri. I was right. I mean, I literally, uh, I remember cutting uh, my graduation cake on the sets of G Mantri Ji, which was uh, the Indian version of Yes Minister. Um, and the first experience was a, a set uh, with Farooq Sheikh as the actor, Jayant Kripalani, beautiful man as well. And um, I mean, you know, and it was a British, it was a BBC production. So there was, you know, there was a certain discipline and class and then that was your first exposure to set. Uh, and I feel like that sort of triggered uh, something behind <laughs> saying, okay, I, I kind of like this. I don't know what this is, but I like being on the set and I like creation like this. And I like, you know, I like putting together things. Um, so I was there in NDTV for three and a half years and um, a beautiful year, year and a half making um, these two shows, Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister in Hindi. Um, and then got on to uh, anchoring. I, they, they felt yeah. I, should, I should start the, you know, training to be an anchor. And so I started with the weather news. Um, and I, I mean, everybody around me was very excited because I was on TV, but I was like, this is the most boring thing i mean <laughs> we make up and then just keep saying the same thing the whole day bulletin one bulletin two bulletin three i said this is too much uh, i i don't think i can do this really uh, by then they were training me to become a prime time anchor and i said oh my god before i get super caught um i need to get out really so i did a bit of night out had launched so we i was a studio anchor at that time and uh, so that was exciting, actually. And, you know, NDTV also during my year became, sorry, from Star News became NDTV and NDTV 24-7 and NDTV India. So saw that uh, that transition, which was very exciting. And actually, you know, one thing now I'm th talking to you, I'm thinking one big thing that happened while I was there was 9-11. Uh, uh, I was in the newsroom. I still remember it was my night shift and early morning. I was in the in the PCR and the Twin Towers got, uh, and I, I remember being in the newsroom, giving that news out. And I think that was the biggest, one of the biggest highlights of being in NDTV, where you were part of the biggest news of, um, you know. Do you comprehend what was happening when you saw the towers um, crashing down? Did you, you know, I know that one, it happened on another channel. Someone said, this is an action replay. When the first tower went down, 
and the other tower went down another anchor actually said that's an action replay yeah you know and i think it was what was happening yeah it was crazy because i remember it was a night shift for us because it was morning in the us yes it was morning in the uh, us and so you know we are just counting down the day has to come to an end it was a late night shift we were like let's go home and suddenly on reuters on the top you know you have international field coming in and suddenly we all looked up and we saw that there's it switched to something major that's happened and then it was surreal let me tell you i think 48 hours of that um of course we i was junior in that sense but there were seniors i remember it being mayhem uh and the excitement of breaking news because this yeah. is true breaking news yeah, yeah. Uh, i was a mix of tragedy and breaking news and excitement and not sleeping and yeah. being the first one to break the news it was many things actually yeah i know it it's it's, it's a, i mean for people who are not in the newsroom it's a bit difficult to describe the atmosphere while it is something very tragic that's also you know unfolding at the same yes. time it's pretty exciting to be doing that for, to be putting that news out so you know you've been in one so you know what what it is yeah it's like a mix of your brain is yeah you know, it's just needing to like say i need to get the job done yeah 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 so yeah. incidentally I, i haven't shared it with too many people but you know i was also offered a job at ndtv many 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 months ago <laughs> ah chose not to take it up i chose not to take it up because ndtv was giving me a job as a production assistant ah. and z was giving me a job as a reporter and i had studied journalism and maine patrikarta ki hai mujhe patrikarta karni hai kind of you know all that and uh, so i often look back and you know yeah. so we might have been colleagues there we could have been yes <laughs> but while you were ndtv your newsroom all the newsroom ndtv newsroom in those days had barkha and arnab and rajdeep and oh my god yeah i mean you know um you don't realize the power these people have you know uh, i mean you grew up watching the world this week so dr roy was of course yeah. everybody's hero uh, but these were all young uh, aspiring you know for any young indian who is aspiring to be in the media or journalism or whatever i think to have uh, barkha shrinivasan jain um, rajdeep ornab uh all these faces that we see today um were all sitting in that one room deciding what news will go out um you know and i think i used to be in awe because i was like this is this is real incredible stuff um just to be around them in news yeah but i think it was farooq sheikh who really had a profound impact so by thinking you know this is what i I don't want to be in news. I don't want to be doing this. I want to. You move to Mumbai without a job. That that's a bold, risky decision. Yes, yes, that's true. I think um, Farooq Farooq Ji. I mean, Farooq Sir was just incredible. To be honest, guys, he was a man. I mean, I think we've lost him too early. Uh, a gentleman and uh, command over his language, craft, uh, tehzeeb, as you would say. You know, he was giving and he was just wonderful. I mean, I couldn't believe that somebody from this is this is real this is normal i didn't know and i was lucky because he was uh, like a mentor you know every time i'd go and ask him can what do you think i should do and he'd always be patient to give information share things was you know you felt a safe he was safe if you know what i mean uh, and i think as women were constantly sussing out safe safe spaces uh, and he yeah. felt safe you know um and yes i think um, i just told my dad um yeah i give me give me four weeks uh because i had kind of realized i don't want to be in delhi guys i i felt like that's not going to be the city of my uh, i will not i don't want to work there it's a city where i i was born i had my education my parents lived there my family lives there but it's not where i would live i think that i was very clear about uh, and so i just four weeks you asked for you know my bua lives there and so uh, i i didn't think that i should just go clock myself i thought chalo four weeks mein to i'll manage some way let me leave you know at least he'll just be like okay one month go you know um and then as one the, the four weeks were getting closer and and uh, i mean coming to an end i i was i didn't crack any jobs um and again those were the times 2004 honestly where you're just uh cold cold emails again you know you're going to offices i didn't know anybody to be honest i have nobody who's a part of 
this line uh, i was i am i mean at that time and still don't have to be honest so it was really a cold uh, move to be honest i um, yeah i mean and i was staying with my aunt who is from bombay and um, she was in advertising so somewhere along the way she understood me and she said no no you will not go back you keep at it you know because she's been she was working and she was in advertising so she knew um what the city can give you and you're not to give up um and so i'm ending the four weeks and fortunately suddenly there were five offers uh from nothing in the first three weeks and i'm counting down i'm thinking oh my god i'll have to pack my bags and head home and i don't want to go to delhi uh but yeah luckily um you know opportunities came around i got them and i chose mtv um because i somewhere felt that i am not watching any other kind of television so there's no point in doing a sony or a you know the regular general entertainment um mtv felt like i am mtv i am cool <laughs> that's what i watch uh, and that's where i want to work and i was very very fortunate to work there for 5 years the best 5 years a um, most incredible set of people uh, really really had a great time honestly and then after that you reached phantom films um no the most interesting thing happened is 2009 the big recession of global recession and about 40 of us were given the pink slip i was included in that uh and so one fine day we are all called uh and i was feeling there's something off after about 5 years of being there uh but didn't expect to be given the pink slip honestly and so called in hr meets you and says thank you very much for spending these years with us this is your severance check uh goodbye your email is shutting down pick up your bags and leave and honestly i i thought i was in a dream a nightmare because you feel like that is something that can't happen to you you why is that other person staying and why am i going you know you feel all those kind yeah. of emotions and um, i was devastated that year that day i i i thought my world crashed in the the because you know that my my whole life in bombay was mtv my friends were mtv my uh, identity i felt was mtv five years i still had years to give the place i was having a great time uh, and they didn't even give me any kind, you know there was that's it you are now not required and so it's a goodbye i think it really hit me i cried a lot that night i was i wept the whole night but when i woke up in the morning i uh, there was a world of possibility a new canvas to be painted because fortunately there was enough money with what i'd got from there as a severance uh check and i could now look at films because in films i would have to start from let's not say a senior position because i already had about 9 year 9 and a half years of television experience between ndtv and mtv but nothing in films so it would mean i would have to start at a lower spot again which means less money but i said i'll take the chance because that's why i'd come to bombay to be on a set on a film set um and so yeah let me let me keep this in my bank account and kick start my film journey uh and it's interesting because the two projects that in 2009 that i picked up did not happen because of recession so i was in in uh chennai for 3 months just before we're going into filming pull the plug disney says i have no money we can't make this film so i'm back from so that's the second thing that happens in the year i'm in bombay i pick up another project 3 months into that project we're about to leave for turkey and france um viacom says no money um no project so that year for me was a true test of whether i'm going to stick around in bombay whether i'll stick around in films or do i go back to television because there i'd get back on the position and the money whatever mm-hmm. so the first film really was 2010 and that was mossam um and so a phantom really happened only in 2012 with queen yeah. and with phantom you were the line producer for of queen yes i was i i i was and i think that was such an incredible journey uh, gayatri because um i think the film just kept getting made um it interestingly it hadn't been greenlit uh one day before we left for shoot 
but we oh, said wow. we're still going to make it. Yeah, there was no money. Uh, and a small team said, okay, you know what? We're still going to go and make this. And and it got, and I, I think the intent was so, um, so beautiful. The intent was there to have fun while we make it. Uh, there was honesty in what we were trying to say. Uh, all of us together believed in telling the story of empowerment of this beautiful little girl from um, Rajori Garden that every single woman, whether overseas or in India, would relate to. Um, and which is essentially why the film became what it became, because uh, everybody could identify with this caged person who yeah. finds, and you know, her, her, her empowering moment in the end is nothing major, but all she says is thank you. Yeah, <laughs> she just says thank you, and it's as simple as that. You know, um, that I'm not going with you, and I think the, it, it's such a beautiful film, and I'm just so happy and proud to have been a part of it. Really. So, did you actually shoot in uh, 145 locations in 40 days with uh, Kangana changing her clothes? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. it was. We had, you know, it was. I, I mean, you've seen the film, right? I mean, you're constantly on the road. You're on the streets of. Paris and Amsterdam and yeah. where's the time to like set up bases and you're constantly moving um, and she was wonderful she was changing in cafes we would have lunch in different cafes the excitement they of was tomorrow which cafe are we going to eat in uh, let's shoot around that cafe uh, a great crew I mean everybody was having a, a great time um, telling the story and uh, moving from one spot to another lugging all the you know, costume and equipment. Uh, but yeah, all that did happen. <laughs> yeah. And so I have to ask you this. So is Kangana like Rani Mehra in real life? Is she a middle, simple middle-class girl who's been wronged? Is she a spitfire? She's really sharp, um, yeah. you know, and I knew her. I mean, I, not like I, I mean, I'm in touch with her, Visha, and she always responds. She's wonderful towards me, to be honest. And, uh, but I, I mean, when we knew her, that was 2012. Yeah, that was a really long time ago. And she's become queen after that, right? She was Rani then, and now <laughs> she's queen post that, uh, all that success and uh, deservedly so, to be honest. But very, very talented, very sharp. Um, People are people, yeah. It's how you perceive them. Anybody can seem weird, anybody can seem great, eh, depending on how you deal with them, to be honest. I could seem weird to people, uh, you know. <laughs> it's yeah. all about perception. It's all about perception. Yeah. And what about Lisa Hayden? I mean, Lisa Hayden, and I love that woman. <laughs> she was incredible. She was, and she still is, and she was so charming and beautiful. I cannot tell you. Like, she's a supermodel, Gayatri, you know, yeah. and uh, her first role, really, as such. Um, and she just went along. She just swayed. She flowed. And that's why Vijayalakshmi is such a beautiful character. Um, and you love her playing it, you know. Um, very, very giving. Very, very secure as a person, right? So she was, um, I mean, and she stood her ground. She worked hard in, in speaking Hindi, speaking French. Um, and I think plan great casting with her. Then we should plan something with her. <laughs> I know she's a mother of three boys now, I think. Oh, and I think you, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful girl, still in touch with me. And she's wonderful, honestly. Yeah. And great casting, I think what we did. Great with casting, yeah. Managed. With Raj Kumar Rao too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All he of played that. that role so well. I mean, really, <laughs> you exactly. just ended up hating him. Exactly, exactly. The whole intent. And also, casting is such an important part of filming, right? Getting getting the film right is getting the casting right. Okay. So, as a line producer, what was your what were your responsibilities? Because many of us are not, you know, people are not aware of what. A creative producer does what a line producer does what an executive producer does so um okay so basically let's say a, a line producer is somebody reporting into an executive producer uh, a line producer is a person is like you know handling line production when you're in a production line in the sense you're the person who is making um the budget and ensuring on ground everything as per requirement is called for uh, and you achieve the day as for what is required on paper. 
the person is so it's a it's a very tedious job to be honest with you it's very very because every single line item in a budget which is under costume on the makeup under equipment under sound under camera under food under transport under every single thing is reporting into a line producer so uh, and the line producer then is reporting into an executive producer who's also then handling the money and and certain larger decisions um you know so i i think that is um essentially handling on ground um production and the main people because you're pretty much like the backbone um you're you're holding it completely because every single person is reporting into you uh, and everybody has to stay within the budget that you make um and and submit uh, way before you even film or even go on a recce to be honest with you you know um so it's a hugely responsible job because nobody else um will be standing there when you go over budget but yourself um so it's pretty much managing uh, the day and monies and people and teams and uh, every single day uh, and what about a creative producer a creative producer is somebody who is not the on ground producer uh is potentially somebody who sees um a potential in a project and then would creatively work on it whether it's uh fine tuning the script or working on um casting dialogues just looking at it from a creative perspective um but would not be the person on ground handling on ground production essentially yeah so you obviously did a very good job with queen because soon after you became executive producer yes uh, i don't know whether i did a good job or not but that ended up being the next step yes and then i was uh, an ep on multiple films actually and uh, with it comes uh, an other set of responsibilities as well because now you're you're delivering a budget um at and monitoring it um and wherever you sort of feel that this is where it's going up how do i make sure that i bring it down in some other department because overall numbers are not going to increase once the studio says they're going to get 100 to make this um they're not going to give 110 even if you feel like during the filming it's going up um so you have to manage whether cutting down days uh cutting down requirements tweaking creatives uh reducing production i don't know you know you have to figure that out creatively which is why it's also important for uh eps and all to be creative because you have to offer creative solutions to the director um where um the vision doesn't get compromised but we still deliver it within a pool of money that has been allotted and cannot change it must not have been easy being an executive producer on bombay velvet because that was i mean the set grand oh. <laughs> it was mammoth i think never done before yeah. one of the biggest films that got made then uh, yeah. we also made The 2015 film. yeah this when he actually it was shot in 2013 really released in 15 uh it was almost a year long project between construction of sets and multiple visits um and it was in sri lanka so i pretty much lived in lanka that year uh and that's the fun part of my job as well if traveling is something that people enjoy that i love it so i'm usually out on long spells you know easily Four to five months a year, I could be out um, between prep and shoot. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a very different experience because it was a different country. You were there for a longer period of time. There was set construction. It was period also in terms of um, it was meant to be forty. But you did manage to get that look so right. I mean, yeah, the, the yeah. Won many technical awards. The it was very music stylized. Was wonderful, stylized music was wonderful. Costume, art, uh, all of it. All those beautiful. visually i think it looked fantastic yeah. uh, all credit would go to the creative team and the director and you know our our job is behind the scenes yeah. uh, we're the ones holding it all together mm -hmm. while they're in front uh, and their work is visible in front while our work is never going to be visible but it's all behind um but yeah i'm happy that at least that was um, appreciated because otherwise the film didn't do too well as yeah, we were commercially it didn't do well and there were there were, there were faults there were there were uh, issues yeah as a producer if you see something going wrong is it can can you 
as an executive producer, call it out then and there, can do some course correction, or is that the director's prerogative? We are just trying to understand what happens. On yes, um, so there are, see, between, as an EP, you could potentially mention the fact that here I'm feeling that it's going up budget point of view, because that's under my purview, to be honest. But if you also are close enough of the equation sort of works this way, you can bring it up with your producer saying, I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a larger, it's a larger thing between the director and producer, to be honest, because sometimes yeah. you're, you're rolling with stuff and you may get a feeling um, that don't know what's going on. Uh, but then you also go with the, with, with, it's always on instinct and gut and it's such a feeling of, um, let's see what happens let's make it you know that's how you approach all films you never know which film will do great to be honest we all sets are the same the intent behind is also the same um, but yes during the making of some films you can make out that this might not go very well is that the feeling you got while you were the executive producer on Mardani 2 with Rani Mukherjee I so you know honestly I with Mardani 2 I knew we were making a a good enough film. I knew that people will come out feeling um, satisfied, uh, if not ecstatic. Or, but I'm very happy because it did well commercially and critically. People came out feeling like it did its bit, whatever. Even there were comparisons with Mardani one, but I, I mean, I knew while we were making it that nobody's going to come out disappointed. Um, and she was quite wonderful, to be honest. I had heard of stories of uh, many stories where you felt like. I don't know how she's going to react to me or I don't know how I will be with her. But uh, she was quite wonderful. Very, very talented, of course, no doubt. And very in command of her craft completely. Tell us something about her that we don't, the world doesn't know. Something. Uh, the world knows pretty much. Uh, she's very, very, you know, she loves her daughter, very, very possessive of her child. Um, and which I guess everybody is, but she's, she is. And uh, very simple. Found her to be very simple as a, you know, uh, and very short. I felt that she's uh, like I, I, I. She's my height, so I feel happy. <laughs> okay, this is not bad. Yeah. Yes. We'll not probe it any further than we. It's your lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> Later, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, and then there was also that other really big film which didn't do well. Which didn't do well. So how do you pick up yourself? So I, I'm I'm talking of Shandar with Shahid Kapoor and Alia Bhatt and gorgeous music and a gorgeous look. So again, it didn't do well. So how do you you know pull yourself from? As an EP, you must feel gutted. How do you pull yourself you know up after a project that's uh, completely wrong? It, I'm sure it's not easy. You know the thing with films, honestly, Gayatri, is one thing I realized over time. You are you the the film crew goes through very extreme emotions uh, in a different rhythm from the rest of the world, right? Our timings are different. What we're experiencing is different. Our demands of, a, of the day are, it's, it's a unit that works independently of the rhythm of life. You are very attached to that set of, those set of people, you know? So the minute the last day of shoot happens and you're told, um, that's it, cut, next day, it's a shoot rap, it's a film rap, rap party, all of it. Next day, you could all be on different projects with different crews. Um, and so this level of attachment, detachment over time, uh, we need to handle, I, I, you need to know how to handle it. Uh, because there are, in initial years, you can really feel very, very uh, depressed. Uh, and I don't want to use the word depressed very loosely, but you do feel very low. <laughs> spent um, an ex you know, a considerable amount of time with a crew, with certain people, and then really they're going their own way next day and you have to go on and get on with your life. Um, I realized that the only way to stay sane is to not be attached and hence not be attached to what happens to a film either. Uh, the process and journey has to be fun. The result you never know ever. You'll never know. Um, so if I wanna just have fun every day, uh, enjoy myself with the people, um, surround myself with my type of people, because in that crew of 100 people, you'll only connect with two or three, literally. Uh, but you have to deal with all 100 every day and handle that energy. And, you know, as a, as a 
producer be the central point and food problem like um, you know bed problem accommodation problem transport problem money everything is your problem that you're like shanti stay yeah. in zen, zen mode um, so you don't you eventually are like theek hai you know so um, you you're obviously depressed i mean you're really upset when the film doesn't do well yeah but the next one would so you're okay would yeah i pull yourself together and Yeah, but I'm happy because of um, Urtha Punjab. That was one of my, uh, yeah. you know, just the way Queen. I think Urtha Punjab has been a beautiful experience, and I'm proud of that one very much. Yeah. Uh, during the making, also we could figure out that this will be something important and good. Yeah, yeah. And again, it was a very you know contentious issue. Yeah, and we knew that it would get into a controversy, but we still wanted to make it. Needed to be told. Yeah. Uh, it was an important thing, uh, and it 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 came out. It won, and it came out, and everybody enjoyed uh, yeah. performances. Also, Ale was so brilliant. Yeah, I know. So before, so I'll take an audience question here. Yes. Before our interview began, I got a question from Sunita Bhargav, who said, "If there's this one movie you wish you had produced, what a wonderful question." Um, it's not for it's because it's one of my most favorite films it's very old uh but i wish i was on the sets of masoom and i was on that uh, it, i could have called it my film yeah i love that film i i i truly do i don't it made me cry too yeah. i i i i mean every bit of that film every scene um i feel it would have been my highlight <laughs> thank you okay i recently uh, heard manoj vajpay uh, you know he was asked this question mumbai ka raja kon and he replied ott what are your i do you share a similar view that you know the ott has come and just changed the dynamics of the game um truly because i think the one thing that's um staring in front of us pretty evidently now is that content is everything we always used to say that content is king script is everything but today yes writing is content is um it has repositioned um the mega stardom to be honest with you um i think india is always going to stay a a, a country and nation that ad, you know there's too much adulation towards uh, our wow. stars um which i feel is a little unfair um I, i wish there was a little more balance in it but it is the way it is because of um the way we are built as a society you know film stars sports stars yeah i think there's um mm-hmm. and especially film stars right yeah. there is uh, i mean there are temples around um, them and i feel it's just are you kidding me but um you also understand where it's coming from at some stage at some level um because of the disparity in our society and uh, the aspirational um value that this brings but ott today has at least made a certain um, has leveled a certain um, way of looking at things and even for actors and um, to say you know what we could still have great stories great production value but let me get closer to the audience by now having them watch us even on our phones it doesn't need to be a theatrical uh, so there's a mind shift that has happened Uh, which i think is is incredible let's see how long it lasts i think it yeah. will that's exactly what he was saying too that you know everything ott has made things very democratic and you know and uh, and he says he goes to bed anxious every night thinking is this going to last yeah that's What the happens when everything opens up and but you know i i mean i've been speaking to people and they are going to choose what they spend their money on now absolutely uh, i think everybody now is starting to think of where will that money go is it worth the thin cinematic experience but that's the thing cinema will always exist but what will probably happen and i think is happening is the big stuff will come there which cannot be uh, which is unparalleled to um, any other experience you will want to see it on the big screen um as a consumer i'll tell you ott has really you know i mean really enjoying the experience of watching you know maybe world television exactly at home uh, but when cinemas open up and i think maybe you know if the food or the price of the food is a bit more reasonable at the cinema halls <laughs> you know that kind of attraction yeah i mean i would like to go and that whole shared experience of a cinema exactly we've grown it's traditional it's conventional it's classic it's never going to go away you know 
um but what gets made for cinema will change i feel yeah. um and for the better we hope for the know. better and i think somewhere the the whole industry right now is trying to figure out what is it to uh, potentially make the big stuff or the medium stuff or the small stuff um does it go directly to ott does it go to, you know i think there's a bit of that mathematics and uh, e- economics is still trying to be figured out uh, honestly okay so changing tracks here tanvi you i mean you you've been living uh, in mumbai by yourself for nearly 15 years now so yes. any advice to young girls wanting to pursue a career in film what are the do's and don'ts first of all i feel um any and everybody should be um chasing their dreams i think that's very very important and to be able to chase your dreams you need to be able to communicate and convince your parents irrespective of whether they agree with you or not you need to voice them and tell them that that's what i want to do and and at, at least attempt to try and live them uh if your dream is to be in bombay is to be a part of the film industry media uh entertainment then um you 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 have to go to i mean you have to be in bombay uh this this experience has to be felt uh it's going to be tough it is uh, very competent uh competitive um some way it can be toxic as well but you've got to come prepared um any big city is like that you go to new york you'll feel the same way any city that's driven by a uh, main purpose of work uh is going to be like that there are more people and less jobs so you're going to have to figure out a way of how to stay relevant so don't come i feel people should not come with false hopes uh it's hard work for everybody uh every single person that is here is working very very hard and is also is also dealing emotionally by not having their families um so there's an added layer of that um so come prepared knowing that it's not going to be easy but if you come with that mindset you're going to have a lot of fun because it's such a inclusive cosmopolitan um one of the i mean it's my favorite place in india so it's i mean it's great fun if you can you come here knowing what the shortcomings are um and in the industry i feel uh, very very open now to young blood coming in a lot of women uh, a lot of women in positions of decision making and power uh, and when i say power um i feel it's um, you should be able to make a choice that's what's power so i feel there are people sitting there in positions so uh, women should and young girls should be should definitely be coming here it's safer now um yeah. things are in place in uh, different companies hr departments um due to things that have happened in the past things are are in a in a slightly more formalized space uh, but you've got to keep your head on your shoulder and and also come thick skinned that's important <laughs> yeah we'll take some audience comments more than yes. questions Viji says that bit about chasing your dream that's the key Urvashi Ashta said wonderfully warm session Neena Bagga loved it but need to leave Can we one last question right what is life as a single woman in Mumbai in terms of was it fi- difficult finding a house is security an issue are you did you feel confident taking in the pre pandemic days taking a train at night were you, you know is it safe to do that uh coming from a, a city that's outside of bombay i think uh, one doesn't realize um what you take for granted um you know um the in mumbai in mumbai you know um yes absolutely i think um because i was so passionately clear that this is my city of uh, my own livelihood and life i i i liked everything about it if i did not i would have been miserable um so i think that that was um the best part that i chose uh to like the potholes the water logged roads uh the small homes um but there's so much beauty right there's your wife who's like your matron who will make sure she's watching over you who will uh, have the key to your house even if you're away she'll take care of everything they're so inspiring i mean i used to just look at these lovely ladies that come and take care of all our homes 
yeah. and our, our um, stick, you know, moving from one home to the other. So that plus, um, of course, I've been fortunate because I didn't really need to shift my house. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the real picture also is that you have to constantly prove yourself to be a woman. You have to uh, somewhere along the way convince them that you know your job, you know why you're here, your head is on your shoulder, this is what you do, you're going to come late, you're going to come, uh, you're going to leave. You know, all of that is still an ongoing thing that you still have to do, but it is a part of what you have to do. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Do you have time for one last question? There's something on Vijay. Can we take one last question, Tanvi? Yeah, please. It's, it's in the comments. Important to hear you comment on young men trying to make it in the industry also. Are the women taking away opportunities? Oh, uh, wow. Um, I don't think women can ever take away opportunities. Men have a huge sense of entitlement across, to be honest. Uh, but I think for anything to thrive, personally, for me, there's a deep personal belief, we have to have balance. Uh, anything that's skewed too much towards women also is not a great place to work. It's not the right way to approach things. Um, so you have to be good at your job. That's the main thing. You, you need to have a great intent and integrity. Uh, if you're able to convince that to your senior, female or male, anybody will get the job. Um, but, but yeah, I think you need to show that integrity. Um, that's the main thing. Okay. Yes. On that note, Tanvi, thank you so much for being thank you. Yeah, a guest today on Gapsha with Gayatri. Thank you for your brutal honesty, <laughs> for sharing your thoughts. Yeah, thank what goes so into the making of a film, how what it takes to survive in Mumbai. Yes. Here's wishing you the very best, not just with Priya. We look forward to seeing much more about a female animated superhero. Thank you. Yes. And maybe yeah. a mainstream Bollywood film next. Um, Hollywood. Hollywood, yeah. We yeah. have to think global. We have to think global. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So looking forward to that international project of yours. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you. you for joining in. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me and have a great Sunday and happy Independence Day. Happy Independence thank Day to everyone. Thank you for joining. Thanks for joining in everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.